Hi, and welcome to an overview of a neuroscience learning cycle for social sciences. The information on this video is taken from a book by Laurel Schmidt called Social Studies That Sticks. It's how to bring content and concepts to life. Although not required for this particular course that you're taking, I strongly encourage you to get a copy of the book if you have time and if you have some extra funds. It didn't cost very much. You can get it on Amazon if you'd like to when you're ready to, to really find some nice ideas about how to teach social studies. But I'll just give, be giving an overview of the book. Also, from time to time, you'll hear me refer to during this course, essential questions. You can just Google essential questions if you'd like to, uh, but also how to make your own essential questions or come up with some great essential questions, some ideas for essential questions can be found in this book called, guess what, da da da, Essential Questions, and it's by Jay McTee and Grant Wiggins, okay? So that's just a reference for what we'll be looking at today. You have access to the PowerPoint and you can find it in this week's lesson but I'll also be going through the basically what you in the PowerPoint, but I'll be giving some looking at today. You have access to the PowerPoint and you can find it in this week's lesson, but I'll also be going through the basically what you in the PowerPoint, but I'll be giving some extra ideas as well. Okay, now let's suppose that you decided that you wanted to start something new or learn something new. How would you go about learning that something new? Well, first you have to become aware of it. After you become aware of it, then you do some exploration. Then you dig deep by doing what we call inquiry. And then once, you can, once you've gathered all the information that you want to gather, then you start to take action. Well, a neuroscience learning cycle, one of the learning cycles that's talked about, especially in the book that I referred to already, and even in format, goes through the same type of thing. It goes through awareness, from awareness, then you want the students to explore. After they explore, you help them inquire, and then they take action. Now, let's look at the first one, awareness. What is the purpose? That's, what is the purpose of awareness? Well, the, the purpose of this phase of the learning cycle is, is to find out what the students already know about artifacts and what happens to the students. Their minds are engaged, capturing their interests. Students glimpse, sniff, wander, and even encounter. Uh, some other words that we might use to deal with this, they might stumble upon it. Like you might call this is, this is, oh, really? I never thought about that before. You know, the teachable moment, the eye opener. You get what I mean. What it looks like for the student? Well, an example of this one might be um, a teacher could bring in objects such as a potato peeler or maybe a coal burning iron or a curling iron, an old fashioned fan. And when you bring these things in, you just put them somewhere, maybe on a table or, or lay them out in the classroom and allow the students the opportunity to examine them, not to touch them, not to, not to, uh, to, to take them and smell them or anything, but just to look at them to see if they can possibly guess what the objects are. Then ask them some essential questions to guide them to discover what the objects might be used for, but allow the students to come up with it by giving them the essential questions. So awareness, that's, ah, that I never thought about it moment for the students, okay? So let's look at the next one. Um, the first one we said would be awareness. After you've gotten the students, uh, after they are become just a little bit aware of what is going on, then we say we want give them the opportunity to explore. So what's the, the purpose of the exploration period? The goal of this stage is to find out what the students know about artifacts. It could be artifacts, it could be the subject, it could be uh, the primary sources. The bottom line is to find out what the students already know, okay, the exploration period. And what happens to the students during this phase? What happens to their mind? Well, what happens to the mind is that the students have the opportunity to browse, to sample, maybe to touch. Now they can taste. Now they can smell. Now they can hear. They can survey, explore, delve into. Other words that might in, 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 in be included here might be um, 
seeking out sources. Maybe they can do a just brief overview of uh, research. Get them to want to wander about it. You want to broaden their curiosity. This period, this is the section that's called exploration. Now, after you've gotten them aware, after you've given them the opportunity to explore, now they get to, you guessed it, dig deeper in the phase that's called inquiry. In the inquiry section, this is, this is intense, focused investigation. It's not the surface stuff now. It's not what you just, you're giving them and just say, okay, now kids, what do you think? It's the students actually doing it themselves. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself because I'll give you an example in just a minute. Although you probably have thought of some already. During the inquiry phase, the students ask questions. They ask you questions. They ask themselves questions. They ask others questions. They ask, ask questions online. Uh, they make appointments with others and ask questions. They analyze, do more research, almost as if they're becoming obsessed with the topic. They become experts at it during the inquiry phase. Um, but then after they've asked questions and they've dug a little bit deeper, then they might refine it. And as they're contacting the experts, they might themselves then want to clarify what they found from one expert to the other and then go back and rephrase some of the questions that they were asking of people that they contacted in the very beginning. The goal here is to help the students to become experts. Okay. Now what it looks like. An example of the of the inquiry phase might be a teacher might take students for a simple this is a simple one. Teachers might take students for a walk around the block of the school or even find an opportunity to take them around the city. Go downtown. Uh, go, go, well, if you don't have a big downtown, take them to the village. Or you might even take them around the community, just where the church is itself, the church or the school, are. not even necessarily having to take them down the long block. But don't forget to get permission because this is considered a field trip when you leave your classroom, you know. But then ask essential questions to help the buildings that they see come to life, help the park to come to life, uh, to help the streets to come to life. Um, they then would, should determine information about the buildings, such as materials used, the surface, the texture, what the building is used for, how did they get this way, who built this part. See, you ask them essential questions, then you help them to come up with essential questions so that they can then dig deeper, find out more, get this information, and find out more about the residents. And then they're going to do something with it. So the next phase, of course, now that they have gotten an awareness of it, now that they've done some exploration, they've dug deeper, gotten some inquiry, now it's time to take action. Because that's the purpose of social studies, to make the students want to get up and do something. What's the purpose of this section? It's using and applying the new knowledge that the students have gained in order to teach, perform, organize, advocate, change the world. That's right. You want students to be able to change the world. An example of this might be... Um, the teacher might encourage students to surf the city's website and then click on the city council agenda, discover some items that might interest the students themselves. Then the students might, you want, might want to encourage the students to prepare a presentation to the city council on a topic that's of interest to them. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, it could be that the city council is about to decide whether or not they are going to allow students to ride skateboards, children to have skateboards or, or ride their bicycles in the park. So you let the students know that this is when that meeting is going to take place. And now we go through all of it. They're aware of what's going to happen. They explore what would happen if children were allowed to ride their bicycles or their skateboards in the park. The, they, they dig deeper. They find out would there be accidents? Are there people driving through the park? What would happen if they fell and hurt themselves? Where could they go if they weren't given the opportunity to ride in the park? What are the benefits of allowing children to ride their skateboards in the park? And then after they put this all together, they make a PowerPoint presentation. They make an appointment to, to be able to go down to City Hall and meet with the city officials or go 
to the, the meeting themselves. Go to the city council meeting themselves. Make their presentation and then boom, they either get the opportunity to ride their skateboards in the park or they are told, no, there's no way that's going to happen, kid. And then they go back and do some more research. So this is just a quick overview of how of a learning cycle and how it can make a difference in the students' lives and even in your education. It definitely will make it come to life for you and it will keep them from going to sleep. Well, as I said, we'll talk more about formatting in another section, but this is a learning cycle that I think you want to consider. It's very simple and it's probably something you're already teaching in your classroom or using in your classroom yourself. Thank you very much. It was good seeing you again. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.